What up traders, what up investors, Ken here from the Dyslexic Investor and what up, welcome to the live stream. This is the live stream with uh, Ken. Uh, this is Stock Talk and we're going to be diving into some fantastic stocks this uh, coming week to look at for options tradings, for equity tradings, for long term, for short term. Kind of going through a lot of the chat uh, to see if, if there's any ongoing questions, concerns, things like that. Uh, talk about some economic news, some potential headwinds. Um, and just talk about the overall market uh, that we see uh, looking mostly from a technical analysis, uh, but then, and of course, throwing in uh, fundamental stuff as well. Uh, and if, if anyone can hear me out there, um, there's a couple of people still joining. Uh, if you can just get hit the like button or put something in the comment section to know that I'm not just talking to myself in my house, that would be fantastic. I can see a couple of people uh, on current concurrent views here. Okay, that's going up. Okay. So if anyone's out there, please put in the comment section or hit the like button. I greatly appreciate it. Again, we're going to be diving to quite a bit today, um, looking at some pretty interesting charts um, with the overall markets being at a very uh, key indication point, looking for a potential pop higher or pop lower, uh, depending on how the economic news goes, even though on this previous Friday we had terribly... Uh, uh, bad unemployment um, with having uh, unemployment, I believe, up 14%. Astro, thank you, my friend. Um, the uh, Basically having unemployment way through the roof, um, and the, the market's still rising. What up, Wesley? What's up, man? Appreciate you joining. Um, so basically going to go be kind of jumping into the understanding of basically breaking down the initial charts within like the futures market or SPY for a potential bounce higher, bounce lower, a crash, who knows. Again, as if you have watched the channel for more than uh, an episode or two, you're most likely going to hear the expression of uh, the crystal ball. Um, again, that's the, the way how I technically trade uh, with my charts is I don't have a crystal ball. I just kind of sit on my hands and just wait for the market to prove it to me. Uh, and then I go in the direction or vice versa, whatever the market or charts tell me, and I just go from that. Yeah, Tesla is going to be a super interesting play, um, without a doubt. That's going to be whew, that's going to be that's going to be a crazy one on how with the ongoing news of Elon starting fights with the local government, where the factories in the Fremont. Um, it's going to be very interesting times. <laughs> and again, it was just a week ago where he was uh, saying things uh, about uh, <laughs> about his stock price being too high. So things might come for, to fruition. Who knows? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get going here. Um, what up, Tom? Julia, what up? How you guys doing? Good evening. Robin Hood Game Boy lost 700 this week. Hopefully I can make it back. Yeah, just be careful out there. Don't try to revenge trade. I've done that in the past, and that just uh, can get pretty nasty. So just, uh, again, don't try to force trades. Just try to go with the market and go with the flow instead of just trying to force the market because the market is going to be pretty uh, huge. All right, so let me go ahead and make sure my screen is up here properly. I'm going to put this guy away. All right, you should be able to see my screen now. So we're going to be hopping over here really fast. Um, we're going to do just a quick analysis here on uh, the futures market. So the futures market opens up at like 6 p.m. on Sunday, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And we're currently up very little, about 10 points and about 0.37%. So nothing, nothing too crazy there yet. But you can kind of see here we're having, again, some particular uh, very, uh, I want to say resistance, a really strong resistance, but really bad overhead resistance here at the 200 exponential moving average on the daily chart. Um, you kind of see I have a price alert out here. This might get dinged within the next uh, couple minutes probably. So that's at 29.42. So I was thinking if this breaks above this, it could potentially uh, pop off, to, to, again, depending. 
again, waiting for the market to prove it to itself. It could be a completely reversal. It could be coming back down tremendously once it breaks above the 200 exponential moving average and it doesn't close above it, it could be pouring down substantially lower. Um, it looks like some requests are already coming in and of course Tesla is on the board. So let's go ahead and look at Tesla right away. Um, this one is basically on everyone's mind here without a doubt. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, and and Wesley, that's a good point. Like it's the Fed's coming in. Like there's a very important fact uh, with investing or trading is that you don't fight the Fed. Um, they their their money supply and their way they can do things is just three four steps ahead of what you can do. So you just can't fight the trend. Don't fight the Fed. Um, it's going to be very hard. Uh, don't try to pound sand and don't try to form it the way you want it because it's just not going to happen. Um, I know a lot of people that are super short in so many different stocks, everything from Tesla shorts to mostly the overall market shorts within SPY or IWM looking for a lot of bear cases for a lot of stocks moving forward. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Tesla here. Looks like a couple folks have already said that. Uh, Tom, I'll get SQ after Tesla. So, okay, with Tesla's news and even last week's news, you saw that there was a, basically a downturn in the market for Tesla. But it didn't, on the daily chart, it never closed below the 21, which is a very key indicator to keep the momentum going. It just does look... This looks terrible, but it's still potentially going higher. Um, it bounced back the following day really strong, closing above the 5 and the 8 exponential moving average, and then continuing uh, riding the 5 exponential moving average on the daily chart for a potential push higher. And what does a potential push higher mean? Meaning it breaks out above the 856 to 869 level um, Closing above the parabolic SAR, indicating for a potential switch of the parabolic SAR. So the parabolic SAR are these little purple dots here. Um, and this is basically kind of signaling some overhead resistance, um, looking for a push higher through this. So once the candlestick can break through this, um, you can kind of see this here kind of play out multiple times where it broke out here. It, the candle switched and then it kind of created an upward trend and kind of creates like a little cloud cushion effect to kind of help the market uh, go up and down. So if you're looking at Tesla, if you're not in it, um, again, full disclosure, I am actually in Tesla. We're in Tesla around around like the 365 level. Um, again, this is going to be a hard time to add to the position when it's up significantly and we're basically I want to say a hundred dollars a hundred and fifty dollars basically from all-time highs um, and then with battery day coming out it could be a very uh, very indication understanding of a potential move higher because even though Elon Musk is in the news for dissing his stock price overall price looking to uh, his overall uh, issues with uh, the, the overall economy and then the, the government, the local governments, the, the, the federal governments, and so forth, just having a lot of issues, creating a lot of battles for himself, to be quite honest, suing the county that his uh, California uh, factory's in, and then tweeting about potentially moving everything to Texas uh, and out of it and so forth. Just not going to be a good cup of tea. I'm going to be watching this with a hawk to see how this trades tomorrow for sure. Um, I don't think it's going to come crashing down, but again, to kind of be mindful of what could happen and just be ready for it. Um, again, I don't have a crystal ball. It's just you just have to kind of sit on your hands and wait to see what happens. Um, again, with the 5 and the 8 exponential moving average being a very strong force with the stock, this could be a very strong force to kind of push it up higher. But again, with that news and everyone kind of bashing it, we're going to be looking to the 21 exponential moving average, so around $727 if it comes crashing off its Friday's highs into this level. Um, and if it closes above it, the, the, the trade's still intact if you're trading it. Again, I'm investing in it, so it's I would like a buying opportunity, but my buying opportunity is going to be substantially lower to like the $500 level. I, I don't see that happening unless something comes out that they're 
literally have to stop all car sales or something. That has, something tragically has to happen for that to come down. Because Tesla is considered a cult stock, indicating that uh, there's just so much uh, people who truly don't actually really care. That almost say they don't care about the stock price. They just really love the story. They love Elon. Uh, they love their Tesla, and they want to support it in any way possible. So that's basically the Tesla breakdown, um, being mindful of what happens, kind of doing the, uh, you, you'll see this a lot on my charts if you're kind of new. I kind of make these like highway or uh, lane markers. I don't know which way the stock's going to go, but if it goes up, great. If it goes down, I would like to buy it, basically, because that kind of scenario, scenario. Yeah, thank you, Wesley. Yes, uh, If also you can join, I have a free Discord up. We just talk about stocks. Uh, I try to answer people's folks' questions. Again, I can't give a strict financial advice, but I can give you, I would do this in that scenario kind of thing and give you some trading ideas and things like that. Just a little fun place to hang out. Um, all right, looks like quite a few folks have already joined. So we kind of just covered Tesla, which is gonna be the big bear in the room, no pun intended. Uh, do, 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 do. David always said David Pitt says I hope Tesla drops uh low so I can buy a million shares lol <laughs> Tesla is very overpriced that doesn't mean it will come down crazy market optimistic for Tesla yeah again the you're you're seeing it in the chat already there's just people who are just completely uh will will do anything for Tesla um uh, Sidwin uh Wayfair 187 put 512 I haven't yeah Wayfair had a great quarter um, you're get you're going short so you're giving yourself a little bit of time for the 512 depending on when you bought that Let's see what the option activity you bought the you bought the basically right at the right at the money here pretty expensive uh, put option there that's a because again it's the, the overall IV is so high even after earnings it hasn't really come back a little bit uh, let me actually put this to volume yeah the volume like <sighs> Wayfair again it did have earnings but again if you're betting on Wayfair to go lower you're going to be looking at the basically the decline of the overall market yes it had a monstrous gap up uh, with earnings basically going well above multiple deviations yeah so if we look on the daily chart here so the better break down this chart so the green line is one deviation the pink line is two and the red is three <clears throat> so normally when a stock breaks out above its three deviation it's it, it's an unknown territory and it's basically considered like WTF what's going on here um, and usually if it stays above this for quite some time it's showing very strong strength um, for it potentially to level off there and wait for these things to catch up um, that being said Wayfair has just had a super monstrous run and I'm trying to see if any other time in their history let me go pull this to a weekly chart that we've kind of seen this uh, you can kind of see this here. They had a monstrous quarter basically in February of 19, basically breaking out almost kind of like the candlestick problem we're seeing here. But we're seeing a super push higher, but then kind of trading sideways and then slowly grinding back. But this is after the fact that the moving average is kind of caught up. So not saying this is going to be exactly what happens, but my sense and the charts tell me that this move has been so strong and a lot of people are looking for something to put their money into unless the market comes uh, uh, down to uh, comes crashing out of the sky which again it could as well um, I'm just going to do a quick fibs for you here so 100% retracement so basically 162 is going to be and it didn't click again that's I love this thing love it um, so 165, let's call it, is basically uh, the support level um, because, again, these moving averages are so far away from the overall price, um, they kind of need to catch up. Um, 
with this all this volume coming in and people getting into this huge gap up there's a lot of people with a lot of profit right now so once it starts maybe starts selling off getting below uh once these moving averages catch up monday tuesday um but below the five or the eight uh that would be around probably around the 165 level we could be seeing some selling and potentially not going to be coming crashing down but slowly grinding lower to probably like the 150 to the 135 um, but some overhead resistance at, is at 203 though so if could, things continue going well the market's doing well overall that stock could still run substantially to the uh, 203 level so we're actually going to put some alerts out for myself here um, and then I, I kind of alert these uh, within the Discord chat sometimes to kind of be mindful of the folks that are, are trading this to kind of give a better a snapshot um, moving forth from there. Um, so that is that. And then SQ for Tom. Tom, one second. Let's do SQ. So they had a great quarter too, right? Like I'm in PayPal, so um, I do kind of follow a little bit what uh, Square does. Yeah, it looks like looks pretty well here as looking moving forward. Even though my thought process was like a lot of small businesses are going to be tied to this, that they're not going to be able to uh, continue serving those clients. But I guess that's not really the fact. There's more, still a lot of commerce going out there with online and other various things um, with Square. Um, looking at a quick fib retracement for you here as well. Let me go high to low. Um, it did break above the 78.6 percentile here. So this is a very bullish trend. But again, just like Wafer we just talked about, it has run up quite a bit due to a lot of earnings. Um, this is probably not as gapped up as much as Wayfair. As you can see here, it's not anywhere near its deviation channel. So if this thing wants to go higher, we're going to be looking at 84 for a potential push higher. And then down, uh, let me go actually put this daily chart. But So it's, it looked like it did break to the, th uh, it didn't break out. It's slightly closed above it. Um, but more of the fact this could come down and sort of grind sideways for some time being um, while these moving averages try to uh, continue to catch up. Uh, Kurt, uh, yeah, <laughs> La laughing my ass off. I think of the tears of all the NAT shareholders. Yeah, NAT has been an interesting one. I got, you wouldn't believe the amount of hate and name calling. I got for this stock you wouldn't believe it like you can kind of scroll through some of the comments but then other I actually posted something on my Instagram um, of it and I got very negative DMS like uh, this it was I won't even bear repeating um, but so we shorted this basically I didn't be able to get into it at nine or this day but I fall I shorted it the following day and I just kind of wrote it down um, basically got down to nearly four uh, I sold majority of it there kind of had a bounce and then got out um, it still closed below the 21 on the exponential moving average so this is still indicating more downside potential even though it could trade sideways until the earnings I think again earnings is a complete coin flip but that being said that could potentially make the stock go up or higher to a certain extent yes but that being said, the overall trend right now is still lower. But again, with the big looming question of uh, the earnings he up here, could be see be a qu pretty big uh, question mark uh, for that concern. Because once this uh, eight exponential moving average crosses through the twenty one, it's kind of I want to say game done. But it's it's going to be a significantly lower, looking at probably around the three dollars and sixty four cents. That's even. The amount of stuff that I got and flack for it, um, I'm going to leave it at that. I might do an update video just to kind of say I told you so um, once earnings kind of come out and kind of see what potentially can go from there. But I don't know. I don't want to rub it in too much. Thank you for that, my friend. Teflo, Tesla wants to hit the 1K mark. I think it does, honestly. Um, makeshift player, what's up, man? I'm, so, I'm, I'm terrible going through these uh, chat things. I need to go better. E David, yeah, Elon could be getting everyone a discount on the stock so far. Uh, Kurt, DNF. What is DNF? Is that something? Is that a stock or is that just a meme or something? Okay, that's nothing. DNF. Nothing happened there. 
Uh, I lost 4K on Tesla, never playing Tesla. Hey, everyone has those stocks. Uh, hopefully 4K was a very small percentage of your portfolio because again, be super careful. Don't risk, it sounds crazy, but don't risk more than three or 5% of your portfolio value uh, on a trade. Um, oh Lord, my this chat keeps on just updating and it gets kicked around. Uh, let's see here. Let's see some tickers. Uh, Kurt says, I hate Discord. Otherwise, I would join for sure. Uh, why do you hate Discord? Can you please update the indicator link in the description? Okay. Uh, I will look at that. The, the chart stuff. So I'm actually going to be doing uh, potential Patreon uh, keep it really cheap prices for like a buck and maybe three or four bucks um, on kind of just sharing my indicators and kind of giving tutorials um, and some of my workflow and then some of my watch list to kind of help me grow the channel and so forth um, uh, mark what's mark what's mark let's see what that thing is Remark Holdings. I'm not sure what that company does, but doesn't look too well. I don't trade a lot of stocks. I apologize. Under five or six dollars, um, they're just too risky for me. If I don't know the underlying business, um, even Elon is bearish on Tesla. Yeah, who know? Yeah, uh, are we buying the dip? No, I'm buying the dip because it could be very bad information. Um, Elliot, GLD stocks only going up. GLD, we can take a look at GLD. So the ones I always look at is GLD or G or gold ticker. Um, we can actually look at gold futures here. So this is gold futures here. We're seeing a, a kind of a tight spool coming in here. So we can kind of see almost like a wedge pattern here. I don't like to always use those words, but you can kind of see this here. Um, and then let's go right here, kind of like a wedge forming in here. Uh, it could call it ascending wedge, whatever you want to call it, but you can kind of see it's kind of trading lower, lower, getting in a smaller, tiny hole. And what this is basically indicating for a potential kick higher or lower. So this is going to just building up energy, just building up energy for a kick higher or lower. Um, it's indicating it's still going lack of a better word sideways to the most extent it's just winding up um, the the only thing is slightly concerning is the five is not above the eight exponential moving average um, otherwise this would be just perfectly fine still for the long side um, but once that eight crosses to the 21 and things start heading south um, and breaking the 34 right here exponential moving average um, this could be some further downside. Again, this is going to be completely tied to the overall market as well, um, indicating if the whole market next week continues going up, uh, gold is usually the inverse of that um, and for their uh, safety net, lack of a better words, uh, for potential lower prices. But a lot of the indications here on the next chart, when you start breaking down Volume has been flat. It hasn't been going down, which is great. Uh, the momentum is still trying to kick higher. Um, the TTM squeeze is trying to switch to kick higher. Again, um, the parabolic SARs, these little purple dots, are still trying to print lower um, once they switch over and once the momentum tries to get above zero with the potential shake money flow going up as well. We could see that going up. This would be a direct... A correlation if the market starts selling off. Uh, yeah, GLD is you can invest in uh, gold stocks. Like if you read a lot of portfolio books, like I've had, you want to maybe have anywhere depending on your age. If you're investing, is anywhere from two to five percent, or if you're in the your age bracket above 45 actually above 50 55 you want to see like 10 percent gold um, again those are just from the books um, 
It, yeah, I think SQ is. I I think I uh, uh, I gave SQ a bad rap. I, th I always thought that a lot of uh, SQ or uh, Square stuff is a lot of those transactions through the small business owners. Uh, Bitcoin is king. Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. Eh? Uh, we can look at Bitcoin. I kind of did a, a Discord uh, doohickey there on basically. Oh, I need to do forward slash. Let's just do it here. So I posted a picture in the Discord chat. Um, wow, it did come down quite a bit. Again, this could be an indication. Again, I don't know if people are considering uh, Bitcoin to be an alternative to, let's say, just S&P 500, um, basically being a version of gold, being a safety net. Um, that could be the fact. But I have a hard time believing that. I think a lot of people... I know, uh, who is the guy, Paul Tudor Jones, who just uh, said that he's investing quite a bit in in Bitcoin, I believe, right? Did I say that? Did I get that? I think I got it right. It was, just, was that last week on saying for Bitcoin to potentially going higher. Um, the chart that I gave out this morning was basically uh, Bitcoin having a lot of resistance here around the 10,250 level. Um, if it can break through that, that's fantastic. If not, looking for prices around 21. Again, that's where we're kind of sitting at. Um, potentially, if we break below the 21 with the parabolic SAR, would switch over and for potentially lower prices. The RSI is kind of dropped out of the, the sky. Same with momentum. So this could be a pretty huge momentum sw switch because we're basically down 12% already there. So this continue, could continually, excuse me, go lower um, but again just waiting for the confirmation um, if it closes below the 21 and then the 8 is able to cross through it it's not crypto garbage it's 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 an investment it is it's a it's tough though because i don't think a lot of people quite understand um, uh, blockchain technology um I was pretty big into Bitcoin in 2016 and 2017. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, digital money, a lot of Bitcoin stuff. Uh, Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines in American. So I did a wonderful little thing and I would, I think, where was it? I think I saw it on Reddit where someone was on the airplane and they were like, I think it was a Delta or a United flight. And they said, uh, they had a tweet or something on the, on the picture that said, uh, we are taking care of our customers. We're not allowing to sell the middle seats on three row seats. And I was like, oh, that's pretty nice. <laughs> but then I scrolled down to look at the picture and it was a guy like basically the front of the cabin. Um, doing a, a reverse selfie shot and it had him and it had every single seat taken even the middle row and they're like well guess uh, revenue or profits uh, won over uh, public safety <laughs> again we don't know the full contents of it it, it was just the picture who knows uh, but everyone had a face mask on there and everything I thought that was quite uh, hilarious um, but that being said uh, Delta and again a lot of the airlines basically kind of look the same here Really kind of hanging down here, uh, bottom fishing, lack of a better words. Um, again, around the $20 price target here for Delta, kind of churning up here a little bit. Again, it's below the 21. It's well below the 200 exponential moving average. This thing has just been beaten up to heck. Um, if you wanted to invest this uh, in the long term, I can kind of see that maybe for trading, uh, it's going to be very difficult because they're gonna have to go, what I'm reading uh, from a lot of news articles and research is they've already taken about 65 to 75 billion dollars from our, from US citizens, the taxpayers, um, into their uh, fleet. Um, and then I think within the next three to four weeks, we'll see uh, things to kind of come to fruition on the good, the bad, or the ugly for the airlines due to the fact of People are starting to travel. Uh, phase two and three are start rolling out for a lot of states, and we'll just see what has to go on from there. Um, that's the only thing I can kind of give you there um, on airlines. Um, I wasn't Delta. I sold out. I got chickened. 
Uh, I sold out just for a very small smidge profit. Um, I just didn't want to hold it. I wanted to use that capital for something really something else. Uh, by really small, it's like I maybe had a couple hundred dollars in it, maybe three or four hundred dollars in. It. I had a starter position, but uh, once I just saw the all the ne overall negativity, I just I did, didn't want to deal with it. Um, and I got uh, an NAT got my attention uh, for trading. Uh, that goes the same with American. Uh, Greg B, can you check Uber? Yes, we can look at Uber. So I, if you haven't seen my video, I did a nice little breakdown, I believe, on Uber, uh, the underlying quarter and so forth. Um, we did draw this beautiful imaginary line here. And if you love my imaginary line, please hit that like button. I can change the color for you. I can change the color to any color that you want within chat. What color do you guys want for the imaginary line for Uber to continue going higher? Uh, let me know in the comments section below, and we'll change that color. Um, that being said, Uber, again, Uber Eats is going to be a very strong driver for them, um, even though that, uh, I always forget that Dana, I can't pronounce his last name, the CEO of Uber, uh, looking for a potential becoming positive, uh, uh, positive or uh, profitable in the next year or so. Um, the looking at a potential uh, swing in the company again this stock has only been out oh, literally a year it's a newer IPO um, um, the uh, uh, <laughs> sorry so uh, uh, obviously green so you can make that BITCH green line I'll, I'll do green that's a great option actually let's do green uh, we'll do green boom okay nice green um, so basically what my analysis was that it broke above the 20 or the it's been above the lot 21 but it's breaking above the 200 day exponential moving average on the week on the daily chart and this is a very positive sign with the overall market continue going higher I think a lot of people were very blindsided on the potential great quarter um, that it could have um, moving forth um, this could be again this do some very uh, fib retracements again this stocks only been around for a year so it's you got data out there but it's, it's somewhat limited um, if you do from the swing high to low again for the last year it, basically the life of uh, uber you kind of see these guidelines where I'm putting in so the 50% retracement falls around basically $30 uh, call it thirty dollars, and then the six one eight percentile is basically around thirty four. So these are going to be basically my traffic cones, my guidelines, my uh, whatever knight in shining armors uh, to kind of guide me on what I should do. Um, if this potentially goes higher, this basically resets, um, and then you have to redraw the lines of the potential, the 200-day kind of coming in being the floor support, and then the probably the next level higher being 37 plus. But again, with this market, things are going to be pretty volatile, so you kind of get to kind of keep things uh, nicely stacked like that. Um, so hopefully that answers for you there, Greg B. Uh, do, 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 do. Can you cover SPY? I'm considering a three five, three to five spy 300 June calls due to price action on Friday following the unemployment news. Um, yes, we can look at spy real fast. We kind of, again, I can't tell you to buy it, but I can tell you what I would do. Um, so with SPY, this is going to be pretty interesting. I'm going to throw this uh, exponential. Uh, Fibonacci retracements up here. So we're seeing this super, very, a lot of resistance here at the 192. I mean, so 292, and then the 200 day moving average was basically around $294, uh, lack of a better words, being very strong overhead support. If this can break above it and, and close above it, this is going to be very, a lot of strength going to it. And then you indicated for a trade. In what did you say? June, you said, right? So we're just gonna go to we're gonna do the monthly. So it's 40 days away. So the 19th of June for the 300 calls. Again, you're gonna be playing a lot of the odds, and that that doesn't play out. That theta could kill you. Um, the looks like it's fairly reasonable. So if you don't want to risk 
a capital cap, the, the large amount of capital of basically six dollars or six hundred dollars per call you can just do a, uh, a spread so you can buy this 300 but then sell the 305 or the 303 I know it limits to your potential upside but the most important thing it limits your downside risk um, I can't emphasize enough like of you want to trade where the fact that you're able to trade the following day you don't want to blow your all your capital and just lose everything and then you're not able to get enough another bankroll to start trading again for another year or two I've, I've fell into this trap before where uh, in the early days where I would just go completely I want to say it's not a YOLO trade but it just it, again it has to be uh, capital restraints around it uh, and again I don't want to preach here but I want to be very careful on how be mindful of what I tell folks what I would do um, and just kind of be preserving my capital um, if you again being options I would rather just sell like the 280 um, I would sell the put that's again but I, that's boring for people that I sell puts and things like that but that's uh, I'm part of that theta game and I hope that helps you my friend uh, uh, Cam Bam says how do you feel about T is that uh, that's not T-Mobile. That's a uh, AT&T, right? They've been kind of been hitting left and right. Yeah, it's below the twenty-one. Uh, it's trying to curl up to kind of potentially go higher, but I don't like it. Uh, maybe for a potential, if it is able to break this, if you want to buy just a very small starter position. But if this falls apart and goes back lower to like twenty-eight or below. I would get out, but if you're investing long term, I know they usually have a pretty nice dividend there at uh, 18T. Uh, let's do CLVS. What's CLVS? CLVS. I don't know what this is. This is this a pharmaceutical or some kind? Um, this looks interesting. It looks like this is completely tied to some kind of news and so forth. Um, it's well below. It's it's trying to. It's I, I'm looking at this is looking a lot of resistance here at the 200 exponential moving average. So that's kind of a eh, not uh, not too looking too hot there. Um, again, that's just going to be your overhead resistance, and then your support's going to be around the seven dollars and uh, ninety-two cents, um, potentially going higher. Risking if you want to get in at that price, breaks above this, fantastic. If it breaks below this, get out. Um, uh, Coca-Cola, what's Coca-Cola? Is that uh, Ko right? So this looks almost exactly like AT&T. This is kind of falls into the overall dividend uh, growth plays that a lot of people preach about. Of oh, just buy the dividend; it's going to be fantastic. But when a pandemic hits, a lot of people cut the dividend, and then that, that value just gets ex blown away. Always look for growth, in my opinion, uh, for investing. That being said, it did did close above the 21, which is a good sign. Uh, the momentum is trying to switch here. The check of money flow is still negative, not really the greatest sign. RSI is middle of the field, nothing to write there about. Momentum is trying to kick higher. So if you want to have a really small starter position that I would have is around $45, $46. And if it closes below the low, again, depending if you're trading this or investing in this, breaks below 45, you kind of have to get out if you're trading it. And if you're investing in it, it could go down to 41 uh, 42 and I don't know if it's gonna see the lows again but if you want to buy um, start adding that to that position because I know Coke's a very strong brand and we just basically zoom out a whole month or uh, 15 years you can kind of see here that the 21 has just been at the floor support for such a long time um, that being said on the monthly chart the eights about across into the 21 which is not a very strong sign as well so be super careful there my friend and I know someone asked about my ATR here. I kind of wanted to make a, I want to do a video on what these little indicators up here do and what I look at. So uh, I will get back to that, I promise. 
Uh, makeshift player says L O G I. Is that log me in? L O G I. Oh, it's Logitech. Oh, Logitech. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm actually using one of their mice. I need to actually get a, a new mouse. That's because you can uh, people hear that the clicking. People complain about that. You wouldn't believe about the things that people complain about on YouTube videos. The comments that you see. It's just crazy. Uh, let's see here. Logitech. Logitech. Great stuff. Well, again, we're playing the uh, work from home environment. Everyone needs a pretty nice webcam to show their pretty face on a Zoom and go to a meeting. Um, and then they also need a great microphone, keyboards, and different things to be able to do their job at home. And again, Logitech is your, your boy to do that. That being said, this has been breaking out really well. It, it hasn't even reported earnings yet. It looks like it reports tomorrow. Okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, so tomorrow after the bell on a Monday. Um, this has run up quite a bit since that. Um, being support here, let's look at what they're saying for earnings. Looks like there's not much out there. So we're saying plus or minus for the 15th of May at around five bucks. We can just call it six, I guess. So six bucks from here uh, would be around f uh, a little bit past here, the 53 level. Uh, would be basically around the 57 level ish um, for potential. That's again the high marker. Um, so we're going to put a little alert up there. And then below would be below that. So around, right around, basically it lines up right nearly with the 21 potentially. Um, around a little bit below it actually would be around this marker here um, uh, looking at the 46 to 45 level um, basically coming in to the 78.6 percentile move down here again this is going to be a huge mover again due to the overall uh, stay at home economy that we're currently seeing and dealing with um, I wouldn't want to trade this in earnings because again my earnings uh, views are it's a complete coin flip um, I would think this would do great, honestly, but you just never know. They can come out with some completely random news, so I would maybe like to trade it into earnings and then get out and then trade it afterwards um, if I was a short-term investor. And that's what I do. Uh, do you really good TA, I sub to Patreon ASAP? I want to learn more. Thomas, I really do appreciate that. I do have a... A Patreon page starting up. I don't know. I don't even know what to charge. Like, I kind of wanted. It sounds terrible. I want to do this for free, but I understand that uh, I need to make a little bit uh, to kind of keep the momentum going and improve things. I, I would love to get a camera uh, and kind of break down things more where you actually see my face at times because I feel like there's kind of a disconnect right now where you just don't see my face. You just hear this uh, beautiful, handsome man talking into the microphone and his. Uh, in his office. Um, what's your take on T or KO? That's what basically I kind of did that already. Would you sub for Patreon for technical reads? Uh, for, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, guys. I really do. That means a lot. Uh, Evan T, can you look at Google? Yes. Actually, I wanted to do a super cool uh, bit about Google. I think it's a it's kind of a... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Like a shadow play? Like, I think it's just kind of underneath everyone's radar. Like, I honestly don't hear many people talk about it. But if you look on what Google does and the understanding of what they have access to and power, it's like, holy moly, guacamole. This is crazy. Um, that being said, they had a really good earnings, gapped up on earnings, still writing up this exponential moving average between the 5 and the 8, grinding higher. Uh, basically, your basically first floor support is the 618 here at 1331 for initial if it goes lower. And then overhead resistance at 1420, call it. And we're going to create an alert here. Um, and then we're going to create an alert here. Again, making our lovely little traffic cones. But again, as everyone knows, traffic cones don't always stay there on the side of the road. They are some crazy folks out there who don't know how to drive and boom run into the traffic cones and causing a heyday for everyone else behind them uh, uh, I don't believe people are 
taking Beast as a safety net. I don't know if it, like, that's why I don't think so if people are taking a safety net too. I honestly feel like people are taking it more of as an alternative form of currency. And I don't think people quite understand it though so well. Uh, what do you think about Teton? Piton is going higher. Piton, is that Peloton? That's the bike company. I kind of did a bit about that a long time ago. Oh, I misspelled that. P T O N. So it looks like they had a fantastic earnings, um, which I kind of suspected because, again, a lot of people are staying at home, staying at home economy. All the gyms are closed here. Um, can't have a gym more than 10 people in it. But that being said, this thing has kind of gone, kind of gone. Like it's if you you if you haven't not if you're not in it, it's gonna be hard to get into it, uh, due to these huge gaps up. Um, I can just bro, blow this over here to the standard deviation. Again, pop it off to about forty five, forty six dollars. Uh, and then kind of coming back the next day or so, uh, potentially seeing these moving averages kind of slowly come up here. I can see it trading and potentially again. Um, breaking the 43 level would be a very bullish play if this candlestick uh, again a, a closed below this one so indicating the trend lower um, but this if this can close tomorrow above the 43 uh, 35 level that would be indication of trading sideways potentially in the short term again this is just this is more trading here than investing because if you wanted to invest in this you wanted to buy it at lower prices at like 30 or at 25 um, and we did trade this way back in the day uh, I think around 19 or something like that and we wrote it up to like $30 uh, yeah basically this move up here we got really it was a nice return uh, but then I was like yeah no one's buying these bikes they're nice but uh, I don't know I know a couple people who own them and they love them but uh, it's not my cup of tea I like, to, I like to eat food. Anyways, um, that being said, uh, so overall support, uh, uh, overhead resistance again at the 43 level, very keeping on a tight leash. I'm waiting to see these moving averages kind of come up. Kind of wanted to show this analysis here. So the 38 level is going to be key as well because it, since it had that huge gap up, we want to see on how it reacts to the overall rest of the market. Uh, so the rest of the market goes higher. Of course, this is going to go with the tide and potentially just straight sideways. But again, with these moving averages, need to kind of catch up a little bit because once this kind of goes into orbit, it kind of runs out of gas. It needs to kind of come back down, rest up, get some gas, and then poof, pop higher again. So I hope that helped with you that time. Uh, Uh, let's. Oh, what what was that? What did I just read? Did you guys hear that CCL is claiming a two hundred percent increase in booking? Good pump and dump. What? CCL is saying that they're seeing an increase in bookings. I know I saw something about on Mad Money about the Norwegian cruise CEO saying that bookings are basically flat from even a year ago. Um, I, I I don't know. Like I, again, I've never been on a cruise. You'll never see me on a cruise. I, I'm not a fan of the water or boats, so um, I kind of don't want to touch this with a ten foot pole. Lack of a better words, um, it is above the twenty one, but this is basically in la la land and no man's land, uh, uncharted territory, uncharted water. It's in the Bermuda Triangle. Lack of a better words of stocks because it's just it's such an unknown scenario there's so many question marks out there if you want to bottom fish you have to bottom fish at much lower prices um, at these prices the easy money's kind of already been made i believe um but we're just going to need more information going forth if you want to invest in this um wesley uh berkshire uh class b and then ba uh, Berkshire, 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 BRSK. So, they just had their annual meeting here with Warren Buffett and uh, the other guy, Charlie Munger. Looking at this, it's not, it's not looking pretty. It, let's be honest here. Um, it kind of sold off pretty hard this week. 
even though with the market going up higher, um, it's still showing signs of stress. Because again, a lot of their businesses are being tapped, meaning that a lot of businesses are down 60% to 80% of more normal capital and revenue. Um, and this is gonna take time to recover. And they weren't the most positive about a lot of sections within the economy, so that kind of is the overall look at here on the potential further declines looking forth. You're seeing kind of this huge steep down, kind of starting to build a base, lack of a better words. The momentum is somewhat stagnant. This kind of needs to start turning yellow. Excuse me. There's these start turning yellow instead of red. Um, the RSI is not too crazy here. I kind of want to pop this out to a weekly chart. Um, so that being said here, it's still not looking pretty here as well. Um, the RSL is kind of still pointing lower here on the weekly chart, um, looking for a potential low. I don't think it's going to hit the prices down here at 160, um, but it could be if you want to build a position into this to maybe buy uh, 15 to 20% now, and then we go from there. Um, and then we can look at BA as well. There, BA. BA is going to be, whoo, that's a tough one there. That's a tough one. Um, so BA, uh, Boeing, um, so a lot of people don't know that 50% of their business basically is military and the rest is commercial uh, for parts and planes. Again, with their factories being closed and not many people requesting planes due to the fact of not many people flying and uh, a lot of airlines fleets need to be probably downsized. So you're going to see a lot of airplanes getting on sale. Um, and then changing hands with other uh, fleets and things like that. So the ticketing for requesting new airplanes is going to be lower, they're indicating. Um, this is kind of showing here on the chart, um, being below the 21 here. Um, it's trying to pop higher. It really is. Um, if it breaks, it closes above the 21, which is around 137. You can see here, it's just been having so much trouble breaking above the 21. Um, it has not closed above it. It's kind of closed above it here, but kind of failed. Um, the 20, it needs to break above the 21, um, and this eight needs to kind of help it puncture through. That's basically what needs to happen at BA. Um, it's just it's just kind of in uh, slowly drifting sideways or lower until it starts breaking above the 21. Can you just explain how the so ATR is the on um, is the. I'm gonna do another video on that. Is that uh, Michael Lee? I'm gonna have to do a video on that to kind of explain that because I have to be careful what I explain because I actually paid for these and I have to. I don't know if I can share them. I haven't got back from those guys. Um, um, uh, what do you think about NAT? NAT, like I said. Uh, I can do a quick little recap there for you if you missed it. Uh, we were short it. Uh, by we, I mean I. I don't know. Other people were too, I think. Um, again, this is nothing to do with the negative comments that I got. I don't know jack crap about oil storage or anything like this. But I do know a thing or two about charts. And when this volume comes in, that's dumb money. Lack of a better words. That's dumb money. That's not smart money. This is going to be a pump and dump, lack of a better word, whatever you want to say, and it came down. So when I saw this, I said, oh, that's a short, Papa. And I shorted it the following day and then wrote it down to the 21, getting a little bit above four, uh, down below 4, getting out most of it. And then once it popped up a little bit, got around about 5, looking for this to trade sideways into earnings and then potentially seeing if it goes lower. Uh, potentially, I feel like it has a potential magnet to around 350. Um, probably going to be getting down to 450 if the earnings go bad with the overall expectation going forth. And with the rising prices of oil, again, I think that it could potentially even go lower because I think this is a complete trade, uh, not an investment for folks. So a lot of people are trading this as an investment and they shouldn't. So that's my view on NAT. Um... Let's see here. Can you look? Kurt says, can you look at C, what is it? CGC? What is that? It sounds familiar. 
how I saw it. Ugh, that looks nasty, man. That is a downtrend. Oh, it's canopy. Oh, it's a pot stock. Um, I can't. I got so whoever said that they lost like 4K in Tesla, pot stocks are my uh, my uh, Achilles heel. Don't touch those for me. Uh, yeah, Logitech is gonna be a really good strong contender for sure. Yeah, the drip for the return has been uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel Shea says work work yes I love me some slack so work has been popping off and I traded this on and off here you can kind of see the pattern here it had a hard time here basically breaking above 30 and once we see this uh, tick above 30 here it's just been really doing well uh, for itself uh, potentially um, going higher but again each time it hit that 30 limit it just kind of came crashing down but now with some momentum behind it the work from home economy people are switching the switch uh, and moving a lot of the stuff remotely uh, this has been finally getting into the workspace here because it's basically hit the high of 42 on its IPO day and it's been just trading lower ever since so I'm going to throw some fibs on here Looking pretty messy. I look like I, you can't make this shit up, guys. Okay, so basically the 50% retracement from the swing high to swing low was the $30-ish, $29 to $30 level here. Um, it just kept on failing at. Um, again, now hitting the 618 here at 3172. Again, if it breaks above this, we could be potentially looking for 36. So it's going to be quite a step higher for that to continue going higher. Um, potentially but again anything can happen um, this is uh, a world of uh, surprises in lack of better words um, so I hope that helped you Daniel uh, Greg B says beyond meat that's B A Y N D B Y N D bada bing bada bang so this is basically another play as this the same thing with what I shorted a week ago or so is Tyson's food um, due to the overall indications of shortage of pork, um, a lot of their facilities get infected with the virus and so forth. Um, that was a huge indicator for Beyond Meat, and they're going in and actually discounting their prices right now on lowering any of their doing uh, fake beef products, lowering the price for allowing people to try it for the first time and so forth like that. Um, that being said, um, the lines here this has been a super hot IPO last year and kind of came selling off really hard um, looking for a potential overhead resistance at 143 here so we're gonna draw a little traffic cone here um, and then support here the first line of support is 121 uh, we're gonna draw a line there as well um, to kind of give you a better example um, but again, with super strong earnings behind it, it could be potentially trading sideways, having a pretty huge gap up and running quite a bit. This could be trading sideways for some time before a potential push higher to kind of let these moving averages kind of catch up there. Hope that helped you, Greg B. Uh, Michael Lee says M-E-L-I. M-E-L-I. What is this? Is this... Is this that uh, pharmaceutical company? What is this? Anyways, that had a fantastic earnings or something and just blew it out of the water. Looking, I bet you that's going to be the one. How, uh, how much money you guys want to put on it? This is going to be the one, uh, one twenty-seven uh, percent retracement up here. Uh, it's going to be up there for sure. Ah, almost. I missed it by just uh, missed it by a lot. About twenty-five dollars, thirty dollars. Um, this is going to be basically the overheads uh, resistance here, and then the lower end. Actually, let me because it didn't click. There we go. There we go. So it's basically going to be forty-five is going to be the overhead uh, resistance, 
845 that is, and around 7 to 56 is going to be your lower end resistance there as well. But it's super expensive stocks. And then VTIQ, I own that stock. Uh, VITQ. It's actually, oh, and I spelled that terribly wrong. My fat fingers again. VTIQ. Now I can hit Q. And enter. So this is basically a play on electronic trucks and batteries. Um, and this is a super aggressive play as can I own, uh, I don't know, maybe 100 shares in this stock when it first IPO'd. When I heard about it, it was about, I think I heard it around 10 or $11. It's been on a super nice tear up higher. Um, for me, this is more of an investment than a trade um, with the acquisition of Nikola or Nico or whatever the other company was that they just got. Um, super strong looking forth, um, looking for again higher prices here. Um, if we just want to do some fibs here, probably going to see this price target at 172 here. Let's see what the low is here. Oh, yeah, it's basically kind of failing here at 172. Looking for resistance, I mean, for support here at 50 at uh, uh, 52 uh, 50 15 dollars. Um, and then it's going to be just trading super, super very wildly. So if it breaks below this candlestick here around 52, could potentially going lower again down to 13, most likely. Uh, what about Apple? Apple, Apple, Apple. That's AAPL. Let that load. Okay. Apple, Apple, Apple. What a day, right? Again, everyone thought Apple was going to do complete terrible in their earnings call due to the fact of all their factories being closed down. But guess what? Anything you can buy at the Apple Store is basically online. People just kind of go into the store to kind of look and feel for things. But a lot of people with so many YouTube reviews and so many videos about their products, it's going to be pretty accessible for a lot of folks to... Uh, um, and I just got the alert for the SPY just broke... Uh, above the 200 exponential moving average, so we'll see on how that goes uh, forth while we're still looking at this in the futures. Um, Apple's just been on a tear. Like, let's, lack of better words, the moving averages are so nicely stacked between the 5, 8, and the 21, um, just really printing higher, just being super strong here. Um, I think this could be trading sideways. Again, if the overall market opens up strong, we could easily see uh, their all-time highs in the next week or two, um, but that's with the overall market being your friend um, and working with you. Um, lack of a better words, I would be hard to see that, but again, I don't have a crystal ball, so anything can happen. Um, Apple is definitely um, something to keep an eye on. Again, Apple is such a huge component with so many different market and so many tied to so many different ETFs that uh, Apple would be a very uh, indication of what the overall market's doing. Basically, just being a leading indicator of the Nasdaq. Yeah, Apple did increase their dividend, didn't they? They a couple cents. Yeah, from seventy-seven to eighty-two. Yeah, look at that money. Um, well, my chat is updated. Okay. Uh, did you take a look or heard of BIOC? Never heard of it, but I'll take a look. BI, it better not be a penny stock though. Yeah, it's a penny stock. I, I can't do penny stocks, I apologize, my friend. I can't, uh, I, I just, the penny stocks for me, uh, I just kind of started out trading penny stocks and I got slapped across the face so many times due to a lot of manipulation. Uh, all right. Uh, do, do, do. What about P and W, please? That's from Jane, James. Uh, P and W. That what is that? Is that uh, what is that? I never heard of this. Interesting. I don't like it. Initially looking at it, it looks downward to me, trending. Um, looking not very strong here. Um, looking at the earnings, look like they did okay again. Again, you might have to add your fundamental analysis to this, but it looks like a lot of uh, 
overhead resistance at the 82 price target here and then looking at the 32 38.2 percentile here at 77.42 for being a lot of overhead but we're just going to be making this quite simple here and it just needs to break above $76 uh, for a long-term trade and if you're short if it gets up to this level and stays below it, it would be a great starting short position, right? Again, I don't know which way you're going with this. I'm not sure what they do. Um, it looks like a bank of some kind. I don't know. Um, that being said, uh, keeping on a very short leash because it is not performing like the overall market is. Uh, because lo most of the overall market is above the 50% uh, retracement. Uh, Gravity E.T. E.T. I love that movie. <sighs> Energy Transfers LP. Man, why do you gotta give me a utility like this or something? Whatever this is. Um, this just looks not, not cool. This has just been doing not too great. It is doing slightly better than the one we just looked at because it is above the 21, but it looks like with earnings coming up this is going to be a coin flip but with the kind of things kind of coming in very close with the moving average is really closely stacked kind of spooling up with energy for a potential pop up or lower um, again with earnings it's a complete coin flip so it would be hard to uh, trade this pre-earnings um, with unless you know something I don't know like it's our trading uh, Joyce Jones, could you please take a look at CYBR? Is that cyber? Is that is that like a ETF for cyber stocks? Oh, wow, this is cool. Okay, I like this. It looks really interesting. Um, breaking above the 50% tracement and breaking above the 200-day exponential moving average. I like that. It has earnings around the corner here which is kind of a little hesitantish for me, again, being a huge marker on the 13th, so that would make it Tuesday, right, if I'm smart? No, Wednesday, I'm not smart. Um, for a potential kick higher um, or lower, but again, this is looking at, hmm, this is gonna be a hard one, because again, with earnings coming up, I do like it. If it didn't have earnings, I like it longer. But I could see it trading sideways on the 200 exponential moving average until earnings. Um, but with overhead resistance at basically, let's just call it uh, 118 and 18.50 here. We're gonna create that, and then some overall support again. The 200 is gonna be pretty strong with support. You can kind of see that kind of happen here. Um, it did close above it, so it means that it is. Uh, it's a uh, looking. Did my mic just go out? Check, check, check. Okay, we're good. Uh, my, I think I just kicked the USB hub. Uh, win from makeshift. Win, win resorts, W-Y-N-N. -N. There we go. All right, so again, with the overall economy and the virus and so forth, it's gonna be very difficult uh, for these companies to make stock or make money in their stock. Uh, due to the overall downturn, it looks like they did, their earnings they lost quite a bit, but they didn't give a rat's butt because this stock still kind of took off. Why is this not connecting? There we go. Um, it hasn't been performing as well as other ones um, with any of the retracements. So basically, looking for some overhead resistance around 94. So basically, kind of up here. Um, some overhead resistance here again support around the 21 around 77 so we're going to draw the guidelines here kind of bouncing in and around again this is going to be again tied to the next two three four five six weeks on what could happen in the overall market once we start opening things up if we start allowing people to get in groups of a hundred again and then 300 and then whatever numbers that the politicians put out there and things like that um, it's going to be super levered to that, um, but with this earnings missing, and I guessing they're betting that things going to be fine and come summertime. I, I'm not sure uh, the fundamental analysis on this, but uh, technically, 
long term this looks like it was a great buy for anyone who bought it both sub 50 um, and then even though it has run up quite a bit um, again even on the weekly chart the a lot of resistance around the 94 to 93 price target uh, moving forth from there but this could be trading sideways again waiting for the overall economy to kind of start opening up Ah, Joyce Jones. Oh, the, oh it is that. Uh, the, okay, I, 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 I know that company. Uh, Josh Loft Fang, please. It's an oil and gas company. Uh, F A G. Is that the fracking company? Uh, is that fracking, Josh? Do they frack the sands or whatever the oil for or oil. I don't know, man. It looks like it had a terrible core. It fell out of the sky because, again, it's oil and gas because of everything else. And it kind of looks exactly how oil is currently trading, uh, kind of in around the 21, kind of making a little bit higher uh, lows and higher highs, and just kind of trading again, just waiting to see on what the overall outcome of the economy will be. Um, with the next coming weeks and again to see if that demand tap is going to be coming back for a lot of people traveling again seeing how the summer plays out things like that uh, depending on what these guys do um, other oh, shell okay um, that potentially I don't know the oil market very well so I don't know on how robust their divot or their balance sheet is and things like that so on the fundamental analysis you would have to uh, do research on that initially on the chart it's showing some uh, again supports lower is going to be around 3750 and then some overhead again needs to kind of break above its highs up here on 46 uh, for a potential kick higher uh, we can do a quick fib for you as well let's go from swing high swing high to swing low it's going to be well below the 50% retracement and otherwise it's not connecting there we go 50% uh, retracement is going to be at 62, so it's really far well off from that. Again, 51 is going to be basically its first line of the sand to try to be attracted to. So around $50. Uh, again, it, it's going to take some while, again, due to a lot of factors coming in. And if their balance sheet is robust enough to withhold uh, and withstand some of the downturns that could be potentially coming in the next coming weeks or months. Um... I don't know. I, the thing is, I, I know more technology stuff because I'm in the technology section. Oil and stock, oil and shell stuff, I'm not too well with. Uh, uh, SDC. What's SDC? That sounds super familiar. Is that another penny stock? Okay. Uh, oh, Smile Direct Club. That's that. Uh, the braces thing. Um, I don't know how they're how they're making money. I thought all dentists are closed. I guess at this they have uh, companies in China and things like that, which I think they do, if I remember reading that right. Uh, basically, it's been how long is this? I it's had as high since the IPO of twenty one. It's just kind of been trading lower, well below the two hundred day exponential moving average. It's trying to make a comeback here with the five and the eight exponential moving average, kind of pushing it higher. Um, this could be a play on the overall re rebound in the economy potentially. Um, again, with overhead resistance around ten dollars, um, looking forth here, but that's quite a still a, s a snap up. Um, with earnings coming out on the thirteenth, which is Wednesday, because I remember that from the last time. Um, their move in the uh, options market are saying about a buck sixty-five. Let's just call it two dollars. That could take you up to that ten dollars here for some potential overhead resistance. <laughs> Uh, main been watching all your videos and learned a lot they are both thoughts on Disney Apple and Etsy in addition have you seen the graph of T Twilio I have T no, no, take two what is T L O W I don't know that one um, but Disney yes I love Disney if it goes lower I want to buy it Apple I kind of did already Etsy, we can look at Etsy. I think it's E T S Y. 
that thing's been going off like gangbusters because again their manufacturing mask for all those people who know how to knit and use a sewing machine people are just making crazy cool custom masks for folks um and it has been to pop it off like crazy that being said it's well above it's the five and eight exponential moving average with having a super strong quarter like this it's going to be hard to tell you to short it um like a lot of the other stocks kind of looking at this here on the weekly rsi is getting up there with over bot potentially um, but again with st such a strong earnings play uh, and strong earnings going forth this could be another kick higher to be quite honest with you um, let me pull this on a monthly chart yeah, this could easily pop off even some more um, I think this could be maybe taking a break for a little bit trading around 73 uh, to 77 if it gets any lower but it then could potentially wait for the 21 to kind of catch up and then pop much higher uh, Joe is asking take two interactive earnings on the 20th thank you for that TTWO so take two interactive is the video game company right so we own an Activision Blizzard which did great and EA did okay I believe um, and earnings this is kind of been trading sideways you can kind of see the lines here basically from 117 to 130 here and just kind of been trading sideways in and out um, I again I would think that this would do well right we should right a lot of people are staying home playing video games um, let's see here so you're saying it has the earnings on the 20th so basically plus or minus twelve dollars so that's a heck of a move so basically from the move today so twelve dollars would be around uh, 142 that's gonna be break it to its all-time high that's gonna be a pretty substantially move 142 wow is that its all-time high yeah it is wow very it's it, it's it looks like a very bullish pattern but we can see that it had a lot of overhead resistance before around the 130 level so just be mindful of that with earnings on the forefront this could be uh, kind of just trading sideways waiting to see what happens with earnings uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Greg, money talks, stock market, and personal finance. Yes, uh, amen to that as well. Uh, penny stocks are not very well regulated, and uh, I know individuals who used to do a lot of, uh, not personally, uh, heard about um, the pump and dump stuff and how they do do manipulations with orderings. Um, let's see here. Greg B, NVIDIA, and AMD. Let's see here. NVIDIA has been oh, such a great little stock. I have not been able to get into this guy. It's been terrible. Like, it's just been running without me. I need to wait for a pretty... Sh ah, I'm biting my lip here. Um, in the sense of waiting for a pullback on this. Again, with earnings just around the corner. Looks like on the 21st. This is going to be a very hard stock to get into right now. Um, waiting probably have to if you want to be if you said say if you wanted a thousand dollars you buy one share now wait until earnings if it goes lower buy some more if it goes higher take the profit that being said it's gonna be a very difficult trade just to the fact of it's already been running it looks like it could have some overhead resistance again probably trading sideways for some time uh, until the overall earnings comes out for this around 316 315 Again, with support down here at 286, you kind of see here my price target at 246. I don't think I'm ever going to get that anytime soon um, where I wanted to buy it. I just never got down to it. It actually triggered it here, but I reset it because I didn't have the uh, the capital. I didn't have the fortitude to honestly buy it. I got, I got feared out of my own strategy. Uh, AMD. AMD is a great looking stock as well. I actually want to kind of buy this um, coming the next uh, two or three weeks, maybe some longer dated calls. Um, that being said, it's been holding the 21 pretty nicely. It really has with the 8 never really crossing through the 21 and trying to curl up. 
I just want to see these parabolic SAR dots to kind of start not going down at such a decline and start kind of feathering off, maybe leveling off, and then potentially seeing this kind of pop off some more. So AMD looking for keeping on a short leash. If the 8 crosses into the 21 for a trade, I'm out. I uh, would like to buy this again at 46 for a long-term hold. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. Okay, looks like I'm running out here of gas here. My throat is just going bye-bye. Let's put on this cold water here. I don't know if that's the best thing to do. Um, I, I'll do Disney. Let's do Disney. Uh, saw unusual activity September 18th, 1.30 called, being bought up. Um, okay, well, we can look at Disney. Again, that's a huge holding in my stock portfolio. Even though it has all its parks closed down, it's taking out its dividend, it's still going up. Okay, so that's enough said there for Disney. I, I don't know what's going on there. Everyone just loves the mouse. Um, it kind of looked like it was going to sell off, and I was like, oh, no, this is not good after earnings. But it really didn't. It kind of sold off, but the... 34 exponential moving kind of came here kind of gave it a little bit of a feather dusting and kind of let it kick higher And then now it's like popping off once this parabolic SAR starts switching over uh, We could be seeing hopefully some higher prices you kind of see my guidelines here It needs to kind of break above the 112 113 level um, And then you're saying there was some unusual activity in September monthlies on the 130 price target I can see that now. I can see a lot of volume here um, that could be, we don't know if they're buying it or selling it, but that is a, a pretty high volume there for the 130 price target. Let me see if I can find something here on the chart to kind of indicate a potential um, reasoning behind that. Let's do here. And yeah, they're actually, that's pretty aggressive. That's the 58.8 percentile move. That's at 34. Uh, potentially seeing the 130 price target in between that if I could actually it, let me see here hang on this didn't connect again to the top there we go so 130 so that's gonna be basically well above its 200 exponential moving average and 125 would be something I would be honestly looking at more if they have that I don't think they have they have my they have, do have the 125 but the 130 are pretty basically right below it because again it's it's five dollar wide strikes there um again if a long-term play like it could be i might want to rather sell puts and maybe want to do like a a call spread on that to kind of break down some of the cost and my risk on that uh potential trade there uh da, 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 da. i'm gonna start winding down here folks <clears throat> i don't know if you can hear um my voice is giving out i'm gonna do a couple more here um, Moki Design says WMT. That's Walmart. Let's take a looky loo at that guy. <sighs> Walmart. So it's kind of weird, right? Like you thought this would be doing really well during the overall pandemic and virus breakout stuff, but it's kind of been selling off here. Um, with the eight crossing below twenty one, be super mindful of this with the overall potential to short it, not go long it at around 125 it's got to break above that and close above it and show some initial strength with volume momentum and rsi kind of going higher um but it looks like it just can wants to kind of trade sideways it looks like it has earnings upcoming here on the 20th again that could be a complete coin flip um be that being said i can see this just trading sideways and just waiting for earnings to kind of come out and then we see where we uh go from there uh Uh, oh, Cam says they don't operate out of an orthodontist or anything. They send out moldings for braces. They make toothbrushes and toothpaste and teeth whitings now. Oh, so you actually do the molding yourself and you send it in? Oh, that's weird. Uh, Josh Law, thank you for the sub, man. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Make sure for telling people to like it. Can you add TGG in there too? I think they have earnings in two weeks. Is that Target? TG 
I love my target. Wow, that looks great. Holy moly, dude. This is a good looking chart. So the reason why I say that is that it is printing well above the 618. Again, looks like it just broke above that. Um, looking at, again, the moving average is really nicely stacked. I'm not seeing aggressive up or down candles, to be quite honest. Things are just trying to recover. I really do like this, just through the fact of earnings being on the on the on on deck could be a concern to me. Um, if I was looking to invest in this, again, I would be doing 10 or 15 percent up front, and then if the earnings is bad, uh, be able to get it on a slight discount, uh, and so forth. Uh, initially, you can kind of see the 21 here on the short term. The next last three weeks has been a very good line of support so we're going to do around the 110 level at or below uh, basically for support and then up high we're going to be looking at trying to break around the 120 level um, so that's going to be a little bit above the 618 um, this probably will be trading sideways uh, less with the overall market going higher this is going to kind of go with the tide and continue going higher uh, you guys are so welcome. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Uh, catch you on the next one for sure. Uh, makeshift, we can do Microsoft, and then I'm actually going to call it, oh, D-D-O-G. Then we're going to call it. Okay, let's see it. Microsoft, MSFT, MSFT also own this for the portfolio. This has been a fantastic, literally hitting near its all-time highs, which is honestly just remarkable but again that is due to the overall trend of work from home who so that being said we're gonna be seeing some support here basically around the 178 for again that's down below so we're gonna actually gonna move so I have my initial support at 168 but we're gonna move it up to this 21 just to be on the a little bit more conservative side and again it's really trying to hit that all-time high basically at 190 call it that if it breaks about 190, that's going to be probably an indication it's going to might be coming off a little bit because that just triggers a lot of algos if it trades within the day, um, and it kind of could sell off down to the 21 or down to the five or eight potentially once it kind of hits that because you kind of see that movement here. It broke out to all-time highs, kind of lose steam, and then kind of came back to the eight. Um, so if we do hit the 190, wherever the eight exponential moving averages it could probably get down to that level um, for a potential short-term trade um, you can see here the 21 has been very strong here for this particular stock um, we have basically seen a v-shaped bottom here in Microsoft so that being said super strong stock great recommendation really do love it um, and then last one Edwin is DDOG and then we're gonna call it a night Folks, that I Data Dog. What does this company do? What is Data Dog? Uh, it's, it looks flipping fantastic, but they have earnings coming up. It looks like tomorrow. Um, I I would like to know what more would they do. To be quite honest, I never heard of it. Um, that being said, it looks like it's a newer IPO. Looking at some overhead resistance level or some support levels. We can throw some fibs really fast, so we'll do here to here. Potentially on earnings, what are they saying for earnings? Again, weekly, plus or minus eight dollars from where we're currently at. So around a little over nearly sixty dollars potentially here. If it was a fantastic earnings and with a normal deviation, and then potentially going down eight dollars to around We'll call it the 45 level because that's the 718 here as well. Um, move or exponential move, exponent, uh, Fibonacci retracement, and then again you're going to see a lot of support here around the 21 as well. Um, that being said, it has just been a pure momentum stock trading well above the five and eight and just slowly grinding up, um, making all-time highs. I'm not sure what they do. Uh, analyze data for company subscription base. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and Alex, yes, I'm going to be working on a video on the all my indicators that I do and charts and things like that and the rationale behind it. That is a great uh, way to put it. Um, you're much smarter than I am. 
on explaining things. Um, so basically, this could this is going to be a coin flip because the earnings is tomorrow. I can't tell you to trade it or, or whatever. Um, you sound like you have some sound advice already in this um, in this stock here, Edwin. Um, looking for potential higher prices, it looks like. My only concern is that it has run up quite a bit uh, pre-earnings, and I hope that their expectations can meet that. Uh, that's my only concern um, for this one right here. And then again, potential with these price targets on what the kind of news they give out. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, I greatly do appreciate it. Um, we're going to be setting up, uh, again, in the the description down below probably going to be adding a the discord link i'm going to be trying to kind of set up a very basic patreon page to kind of give a, a place for some people who don't like discord it sounds like um who people kind of want to get a better understanding of how i do things and kind of have me have a little bit more easier access to uh talking to me uh, messaging me and kind of doing some more daily very short videos on explaining some trading ideas and things like that. So that being said, I greatly appreciate everyone who showed up today and all the questions that were asked. I hope everyone learned something and I hope everyone has a great evening and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. This is Ken, the Dyslexic Investor, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.